Um, Micron has mentioned, and also I've heard it from you and others, that they have a commitment to the underserved population of this area. Could you elaborate on that? Yeah, um, I, what I'll say, uh, some of those commitments have been articulated. Some of those uh, are going to be announced in the not too distant future. Um, but what I can say is that as part of the announcement last week, um, Micron uh, made clear that they are making uh, the single largest corporate um, community investment fund uh, that, that, as far as we can tell, in the history of the world, uh, certainly in the history of New York State and in the history of the U.S., uh, this is a half a billion dollar investment fund that's being put together. Micron is putting in $250 million over the next 20 years of their own corporate capital. New York State's putting in $100 million to match that commitment from Micron. And together between the state, the county, center state, Micron, we're going to go out and leverage another $150 million from local partners, from statewide partners, from national partners um, that want to co-invest with us in four key areas. Uh, the first is education. We know that for this project to be successful, our entire education system, not just higher education training engineers, but all the way down to our K-12 through education system throughout Central New York um, needs to um, needs to be improved, needs to be strengthened, and we need to bring additional emphasis on the STEM jobs that are going to be created uh, from this process. That could be things like the regional STEAM high school that we've been talking about for the last three years, and, uh, and also projects in, in other uh, districts throughout our suburban communities and our rural communities. The second major focus is going to be workforce development. They're going to be hiring 9,000 direct employees and making commitments to hiring people directly out of our traditionally disadvantaged communities. We need to build a workforce training pipeline that is sufficient to the scale of Micron's needs and that is also to the scale of our community ambition, which is to lift as many people up as we possibly can with this investment. The third major area uh, of funding through that community investment fund is housing. We know that housing is uh, is going to be a critical challenge. And just to wrap your heads around this, Ken, if there are 45,000 new jobs in Central New York as a result of this project over the next 20 years, that could mean as many as 125,000 new residents in our community. Just think about that. Uh, in, a, in a metropolitan area that has 670, 700,000 people, um, you'd be, uh, you know, you're adding 25% to our total regional population. Um, that's going to require that we build more housing, different types of housing, and it's also going to require that we go out of our way to ensure housing affordability for those who are the most vulnerable. Um, we've seen what happens in other rapidly growing communities. Um, we've studied it uh, extensively, uh, and we think that we can get out and ahead of some of those challenges. Can we mitigate every single one of those concerns? No. Um, but having the foresight to ensure that we're investing in affordable housing on a parallel path uh, to attracting an investment of this scale, I think is going to position us much better to be successful. And the fourth major area of focus for that community investment fund uh, is, is what we uh, generally just refer to as, as community investments. Think about uh, projects that are important to central New Yorkers, whether it's a, a community center or, um, or new parks and recreation opportunities. Um, there are gonna, uh, arts and cultural and, rec and, uh, and other opportunities. There are going to be ample, um, uh, ample ways that that $500 million community investment fund is going to be deployed over the course of the next uh, 20 years. They're going to leave a lasting imprint on life in central New York.